Hello and welcome to day one of our 30 days of watercolor flowers 2024. Today we are going to be painting the foxglove. Now for this new series I'm going to be starting with a sketch each day so that you can get an idea of what the flower is supposed to look like before we paint it. The shape of the foxglove flowers are these long open bell shapes. The flowers are all connected to this really long stem and they start bigger towards the bottom and they get smaller as they go towards the top. In the open shape of this bell for the foxglove, there is sometimes other colors, there's definitely spots and little freckles, and then as you get farther up, the flower is more closed off and you don't see the color inside. There's some greenery at the top representing some flower buds. Then the bottom stem has some little stems coming off with some stamen for the center. It's kind of representing a flower that's popped off and there's some little stamen showing. All right, so now that you know the basic idea of the shapes of this flower, we're going to get to painting it. So I have a lot of colors on my palette. I will be pulling colors, whatever I think is necessary from my palette. You can use whatever colors you want. I'm a big believer in you don't have to completely copy colors, especially because I mix a lot of my colors. I'm not even sure what colors to tell you. <laughs> These are Windsor and Newton brand colors, uh, watercolors, and I am using a mixture of the Opera Rose and some purple colors to get this lighter color. So I'm adding a lot of water to keep the color light and I'm just going in and creating these bell shapes. How I'm doing that is I'm creating kind of these rounded triangles with a wiggly circle on the face. So just imagine that you can see where the color is going for the opening of the foxglove flowers uh, without painting it right now. So you're also going to want to remember that the flowers in the middle to the end are bigger and they get smaller as they go up. So I'm starting with the middle section of flowers, then I'm going to be able to go under this section and layer in some flowers that are a lot bigger because the end, the tip of their triangle, should be a little bit more covered if they're layered. So I wanted to start with that middle section first so I could get some layered flowers underneath. Now that we have our layered section of flowers for the middle, we haven't done the small flowers at the top, I'm going to go in with some paint at the top of each of the flowers, especially while it's still wet. This is going to make the shadow color. So if I can dab in some deeper purple pink color while it's still wet, I can really blend in some shadow color so it's not super flat. Now, if some of the areas have dried, like some of these middle section flowers have, you can just wet your brush, dab it on the paper towel, and blend it out yourself. And you can see how just adding that shadow color at the top of the flowers really helps give them a lot more dimension and depth. You can tell that they're going back further around those tips. Now I've added more water to my color that I have on my palette and we're going in and adding the smaller flowers. So as it goes higher and higher, you lose some of that bell shape. You can't see inside the flower quite as much. So they become less bell shaped and more long oval shapes. Then I realized it needs even 
bigger flowers so we're going to do one more layer of these bell shapes doing even bigger flowers a little bit more spread apart on the bottom All right, now that we have all of our little flowers, we have all of the little shadow colors added, we are going to mix up the color for our green. Now I'm using sap green and some indigo to make it really nice and dark, give lots of contrast to this beautiful pink. And I'm just going straight down to create the stem using very thin pressure with the tip of my brush little wispies coming off of the stem for tiny little stems and then kind of like these little prongs where the flowers used to be but they have fallen off then i added a couple of little leafy bits to the bottom because there are some leaves on here on this flower even though they're not very prominent and then i went through and added some greenery to the center so i'm creating the stem peeking through, just going up through the flowers, and then in some areas where you are seeing the base of the flower where it would attach to the little prongs, the little leafy bits that kind of attach to the flower, I am painting those on as well. Keep it very minimal. You don't want to overdo the greenery. You don't want it to be the center focus. So if you leave a little bit of white space or not everything is connected, I think that looks really organic and natural. And then as you come to the top, you'll do little tiny leafy bits like little buds for the flower near the top. Now that our flowers are dried, we are going to create the inside of the bell. So think about just making a really long, wonky shaped oval. You're just trying to create that idea that these little flowers have an inside section that you can kind of see the bottom of. So if you make the edges a little bit wavy, it will look like the petals coming over the inside of that section. So I'm not really making this look any particular way, except that I'm going from one end to the other, leaving color along the bottom for the lip of the flower coming across the bottom and then I'm making it wavy so that you can see the idea of petals coming over that open edge. And I'm using a bright purpley pink because I want a lot of contrast so that this really stands out, looks really shadowed so that you can feel like you're looking into the flower. I'm adding some darker purple to the mixture I already have on my palette because now we're going in and we're adding a darker color because as we're looking into something, not only is it going to be darker as uh, you're going into the opening, but there's going to be a darker shadow as it gets deeper. So we're going to place just along the top of that color we had just placed, the darker color to give a lot of depth and make it look like it's going even farther than it was before.
Now my style is a little bit more loose and less realistic, so I'm taking some light purple and I'm adding very loosely with my brush some shadow color. So I'm just pushing down some purple without making sure to soften the lines just at the top of the flowers. It adds a lot of contrast, a lot of texture, and I think it really makes them feel alive. I'm picking up some really bright concentrated pink and doing a very thin line with some little dots at the end so that it looks like the little stamen that is left over from where the flower has fallen off the stem. I'm picking up some sap green more concentrated with less water so that I can add some contrast by adding the dark color to the greenery that I already have. Finding ways to add contrast to your watercolor paintings will make them look less flat and more dimensional because you'll have different dimensions of watercolor layers and lightness and darkness within your painting and that will just really make everything pop. So for example, we need a lot more contrast in the openings of these flowers. And the shadow color we had before really wasn't cutting it, so I just got a darker purple and I swiped over the top. And it helps so much. It really makes the more stark line. Now that the colors have all dried, I'm going in straight from the paint and I picked up a really dark purpley blue and I'm adding the freckles, the telltale freckles that are inside that opening in the foxgloves. So I am just placing them randomly, small, large, making sure they're placed within the opening that we've created. I'm also adding a little bit more purple contrast to the tops of these little baby bud flowers, and that is it. Now we are going to add our foxglove to our watercolor chart. So once again, we have 30 squares on our chart. Today is day number one, so we are putting the foxglove in the first square. And it's kind of hard to paint these tiny, but just do your best. The most important thing is at the end, you'll be able to look back and see that you have 30 beautiful flowers. Thank you so much for being here today while we painted day one, the foxglove. I will see you tomorrow for day two.